Okay. Shalom, shalom. It's good shalom. to have you here, and I understand that there's a new congregation being founded in Holland, and with it, and not only an organi a, a congregation, but also an organization, a larger one. It's being put up. It's sort of like starting up. Yeah. It's wonderful to know that you will have a synagogue that has been warmed up by generations and generations of people who prayed there, mm. and that you will bring it back to life. It's a resurrection of a synagogue. It's a place where actually it's owned by a foundation that is totally neutral, and we rent it for the services and the high holidays and so on. There's exhibitions. And, uh, if I were the synagogue, I'd be very happy. <laughs> yes. So you have some things that you'd like to discuss with me. There is two questions I would like to ask you. And the first question is, what made you, a, a Orthodox rabbi, make a what motivated you to, um, in a certain way, leave orthodoxy and start what we call now the renewal? It's a good question. I think I'm going to look in the camera uh, to tell the people who will listen to that. <clears throat> I began as a rabbi in the Chabad Lubavitch movement. and. Uh, that is a strictly orthodox way of being Jewish. But the wonderful thing about that movement was that it also taught things that have to do with spirituality, with meditation, and the more important thing is how to be close to God. How to be close to God also meant how to be close to God here and now. And that's where uh, after a while, my orthodoxy didn't feel so comfortable because it didn't take into consideration what was happening in the here and now. After the Holocaust, it was very difficult uh, because we wanted to rebuild everything that was destroyed during the Holocaust. And so, we were thinking a lot about what I called in those days restoration. But then that was not enough because uh, it only took us back to before the Holocaust and it was not dealing with the emerging cosmology that was happening. It was not dealing with the paradigm shift that we were undergoing. And the very teachings that I participated in in Chabad Lubavitch were the ones that kept on pointing that one has to be, as Reb Shnei Zalman told his Hasidim, you have to live with the times. Living with the times meant also to start raising questions that had to do with ecology, with feminism, that had to do with how do you bring people to prayer and to meditation who were not raised in it, and that had to be bridged and so for this reason, we embarked in the things that had to do with renewal. And in renewal you find that the body, the very body of flesh, has to be honored in a different way. So you have to bring that into prayer. And your feelings, your emotions have to be brought into prayer. And then, it isn't enough to keep on reciting what's on the page of the prayer book. The mind has to be filled with an understanding that fits the cosmology of our day. But most important it was to be seeing oneself vis-a-vis -vis in the presence of God. And that part of these four levels are the four levels that the Kabbalah teaches about the four worlds. So Jewish renewal is really a four-world movement. And the four worlds are the spiritual levels of being. Yeah, the four levels of being, the being of the body, the being of the feelings, the being of the mind, and the being of spirit. So you see you're moving into the renewal as an extension of your orthodoxy, as a consequence maybe. Of as a consequence, as a growth. In other words, just the same way as the movement of the Baal Shem Tov and Hasidism in its own day 
<clears throat> was responding to the here and now of those days. So we are responding to the here and now of this time. But we are not responding to this as if we had no background, and no history. In fact, everything that we had from before enters into but becomes um, metamorphosed into the present. You mentioned Baal Shem Tov, and that brings me to my second question, which is, do you see the renewal as it emerges today as a singular event, or do you see it as a pattern in Jewish history that these renewals or these uh, reforms happen periodically? That's absolutely true, that they have the second option that you say. It is true that from the time of the patriarchs to the time of Moses, there was already a shift. And that shift was occasioned by the fact that we were in exile in Egypt. And so we had to go through the crucible of the difficult period of Egypt to be ready to receive the Torah. And we continued, and after the destruction of the first temple, we went through the crucible of the exile in Babylon, and that gave us the second level of Judaism, which was the beginning of Rabbinic Judaism. And Rabbinic Judaism came into its own fully after the destruction of the second temple, and there again it had to reorganize itself and become renewed as it was at that time. And if you look at the renewal that happened after the expulsion from Spain, mm -hmm. the great growth of the Kabbalah happened as a result of that in the city of Safed and other centers in the Holy Land. And after Chmelnitsky and the destruction uh, and the pogroms that happened in Russia and in the Ukraine and in Poland, there came the Baal Shem Tov and renewed us. And so, yes, this has been a process, a constant process. And when the process does not happen, stagnation sets in and boredom. And that's one of the reasons why some people would go to a synagogue today where they find that it's almost like a museum. I once went to the big snoga in Amsterdam, and there there was the shamash with the Napoleon hat and all that. But all I saw was a routine that was established in the 1700s, still being continued to the day, which is inspiring only if you want, are interested in the antiquity of things. But if you're interested in what nurtures you today in your relationship with family and with the world and dealing with the ecology, and dealing also with the dialogue between religions. Uh, if I remember correctly in the Snoga in Amsterdam, there wasn't even a dialogue between Ashkenazim and uh, the Spardim Tehorim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it is really necessary to um, create that renewal that this time offers us. Thank you very much. That's You're cool. welcome. I want to send you blessings and recognize that what renewal is, is a wonderful movement, but it's not, it's not a denomination. You may have to organize as a denomination for political and financial reasons, but it's not a denomination, because the Orthodox, the Conservative, the Reform, the Reconstructionists, all of them have borrowed from renewal. And there are many people who will be wearing a talit with all these wonderful rainbow colors who don't even know where it came from. But I designed it on the basis of the Kabbalah. So I give you a blessing so that you may succeed in what you're doing and feel fulfilled in your services. Amen. <laughs>